we're doing a tryout for an hour of the case of the golden idol now what is this this came out last year it's a mystery game solving murders across well the description said murders over the course of 40 years all somehow connected and related uh, apparently getting got very good user reviews i don't know anything about it aside from the little bit that i played to test it out um, some people said it's like a spiritual successor to Return of the Obra Dinn, which is, that is some, you know, that's some language being used there, you know. We're gonna have to see if that, if that could possibly hold up. We'll find out. We're gonna start a tryout of the Case of the Golden Idol. So how do I want to play? There's the recommended experience with highlights. You can see the highlights there. Or no highlights if I want to find the clickable spots. You know, I'm fine with the game telling me where the clickable spots are. Well, it's, it's probably better like that. An abrupt termination of contract. This is the prologue. And it's getting real serious right off the bat. So it seems like the premise of the game is we get a moment in time. And we have to figure out what's happening in that moment of time. So, for instance, I could click on this man. I knew what you were plotting, you snake. And we could see what he's holding. January 5th, 1742. Both parties agree to these terms for the expedition to Monkey Paw Island. Albert Cloudsley has rights to two-thirds of all valuables for funding the expedition. Oberon Geller has rights to one-third of all valuables in any golden statues found per for providing the map to the expedition site. All right, it's a contract. Uh, clearly, these two men have a disagreement over something. Now, some of the words are underlined, and we can do this. And when I saw this, I was thinking, oh... We're saving words to a word bank? I mean, people are talking about Oberdin, but I'm thinking Laser Lords. How many games exploited the word bank technology? Look at these other things that he has. Like a pipe? Un it's Un Pipe? That is Un Pipe. And a dagger. What about this gentleman? Ah! He said. Oh, what else? What else could he be saying? Not much else he could be saying. He has a scalpel. He too has a copy of the contract. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. It's a map. I can add the words from these locations to my word bank. He's got a medicine bottle. Over here we got a bag. Two bags filled with coins and gems. A tobacco pouch and pipe cleaner. A bag of medical instruments and some medicine. A golden statue with a red stone and a bag filled with coins and gems. So they both they have, have two bags of gems here, one bag of gems here, and a golden statue. If we look at the contract... That seems like that seems like what they were agreeing to. One of them agreed to two thirds of valuables. The other one had rights to one third and any golden statues found. So it seems like they were splitting them up as agreed to on the contract. Okay, now that I've looked at these things, I can look at thinking. I can fill in information. On the left, it's telling me to fill in what's happening. Blank pushed blank from a cliff in the blank of blank on Monkey Paw Island. Now we can help ourselves here by filling in information like names and locations. So this gentleman, what's his name? Well, the one who's falling has scalpel, has medicine. So we might assume that he's the doctor, Dr. Oberon Geller. So let's fill his, his name in. Uh, 
And that would be the... So there's only two people. So the, the, the pusher would have to be Albert Cloudsley. When a scroll is filled in, words can be dragged directly from the slots. All right. Now, what about this location? They're camping in blank of blank. Well, this is the location we can see. Here's the map up here. Can we figure out where this is on the map? Well, in the distance, I can see two islands. And by the Horn of Thumb, I do see... Yeah, by the Horn of Thumb, there are two islands. So maybe that is where they were camping. Everything is filled in correctly. All right, so then we can fill in the information. What's happening here? Well, it looks like Albert Cloudsley is pushing Oberon Geller from a cliff in the Horn of Thumb. The scroll has been fulfilled, no hints accessed, while Dr. Oberon Geller was surveying the poor weather with his looking glass. His expedition partner, Albert Cloudsley, Esquire, suddenly pushed him off the cliff. All right, and so that's a, that's a mystery solved. These two men went to this island, they got some treasures, and Albert, for some reason, decided that he needed to kill the doctor. But why? We don't know the reason. Well, what's this? Okay, so I haven't seen this scene yet. What's going on here? A painting. That, uh, that's a guy enjoying some dinner. Mm hmm. It's a jacket with some stains. A yacht slowly floating in the river. And that looks like a golden idol. That looks like a golden idol if I've ever seen one. Well, if the doctor died, I guess it had to be Albert who brought this back. Spontaneous combustion. I, Sebastian Cloudsley, will share my humble contribution to the science of anatomy and chemistry. August 22, 1786, 12 o'clock. Woke up. A beautiful... At noon? A beautiful day. 12.30. Washed and dressed in my dining attire. 1400. Had a beautiful roast duck for lunch. 1600. Changed to my hunting attire. 1700. Rode to hunt badgers, so had no luck today and returned home. 1800. Changed to my researching attire. 1900. Changed to my dining attire. Is he doing anything actually in between changing clothes, or is it just changing clothes? 20, uh, 20 o'clock. Had a tasty beef loin for supper. 22.30. Filled in my diary and went to bed to continue reading from my research. I should remember some words. Also spontaneous combustion. And Sebastian Cloudly. Cloudsley. Here's a map. Woodshire. Crow Tower. Blackfield. So if we're looking out here, there's uh, water out there. I can only assume we're in this house in Blackfield. A tall, rickety ladder. Henry Clover, lead poisoning. There's a mask up there, but I guess I can't click on that. All right, who is this gentleman? This has been added to the thinking panel. A ring with a ruby. The man is not breathing. His head is badly wounded. Yeah, he's got quite a look of a uh, look of shock on his face. All right, so is that everything we could look at? Okay, blank. Lord of blank passed away in his bed. The cause of death was a blank, which occurred when he fell from a blank while he was blank. Well, I've only seen the one name. Assume, right? Sebastian died. Uh, let's see. The map, I said it looked like it was probably at Blackfield. 
cause of death, well, um, let's fill in these slots. Blank attire, blank attire, blank attire. So, let's see. Uh, well, this looks probably like researching attire. This would be his dining attire. And this would be his hunting attire. Okay, the cause of death was a... Spontaneous combustion! No, it's probably a head wound. Which occurred when he fell from a ladder. While he was... Well, I mean, that's green. Well, it's green, so... Would we, would we say hunting? Well, no. It'd be researching. He'd be researching. But, I mean, he died in his hunting attire. I mean... Wouldn't, you wouldn't think that. You would. I mean, if he's... you think he would die in the clothes that he was wearing. No, so it couldn't be hunting, because how, how could he be hunting? It does say that these are filled in correctly. Let's take a look at his log again. Oh, dining attire was the last one. But it says that this is his hunting attire? Let's have another look. Ring with Ruby. Head is badly wounded. Lead poisoning, which... Doesn't look like it was lead poisoning. Oh, rickety ladder. Oh, here's some dates. Mm, but... Does not look like we can click on anything. Blackfield. Ah, horse is running in the yard. Well, that was one... Well, we didn't get that, but... Does that actually help us with what we're trying to solve? Well, I mean, yes, if he is in his hunting attire. Did he make it all the way back to his bedroom? Did he just think that it wasn't a problem? Oh, I'm fine. Just a headache. I'll just rest, I'll, I'll just rest it off, I guess. While the Lord of Blackfield was hunting his horse threw him off, and he suffered a deadly wound to the head. Alright, well... The cause of death in number three... Seems kind of plain. Seems pretty clear without do... Got some animations. Yeah, he didn't make it. Can I click on anything here, or should I just close? <clears throat> All right. He's not saying anything right now. It's a scorched horse brush. A scorched knife. Spare me, devil! I was simply following orders. Ooh, the Astonishing Monkey Man. Owned by the Pear Brothers. It's a knife. What the blazes? August Jockey Club Doiby. Race 3, win Raging Sultan, place blank, show blank, wager 35 pounds. Now, if it's all the same to you, I will take my leave. He seems quite calm about whatever's going on. Spon oh, spontane- he did a magic spell! He did the spontaneous combustion spell? To perform the combustion trick, you must first cast a freezing spell, the sacred glyphs for combustion on the idol. Right, here's some glyphs. Those- yep. Yeah, there's some glyphs on this idol. 
There's the ruby ring. He's got some money on him. So he's t he he has the idol, and for some reason is setting this guy on fire. This guy has a horse brush and a knife. Hmm, interesting. Says, well, that might, I don't know if that's Ash Blair or if that's the brand of his tobacco. Prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my nephew, E.C. Two shillings and a penny. A saddlebag. A dagger. Everyone has a dagger. It's just, you know, it's common sense to carry one around with you these days. Stable rota for Adam and James. Well, who was grooming the horse is the person who would be on fire, I suppose. I guess we should see what day it is. What an unexpected turn of events! Embroidered handkerchief, so I guess this is EC. Money. Dear Edmund, it has reached my attention that you are seeking a capable new servant. I have just the man for you. David Goran is an experienced coachman with a diverse set of talents that I'm sure you will find very useful. If you are displeased with the services, do not hesitate to let me know. Yours... Theo. Alright, so EC e is Edmund. He's got a stiletto blade. London Gazetteer, Monday, September 7, 1786. Lord Edmund Cloudsley. Oh, Edmund Cloudsley. So we're following the Cloudsley family. Lord Edmund Cloudsley's speech stirs Parliament. Alright, so we know this is Edmund Cloudsley. Don't know who this guy is as of yet, but he does have the ruby ring. Is he is he being paid by Edmund? Since we don't we know the ruby ring does is owned by the Cloudsley family. So he, this guy is the he he operates the carriage for Edmund, I guess. This guy doesn't know what's going on. Hair Brothers. Oh, and up here is... <laughs> I don't know. What is that? <laughs> what is this supposed to be? It's, it's adorable. Oh, there's a second room. Oh, it's a, it's a Batley? And a there's a Cloudsley, there's a Cuba. Okay, so this is the logo of the Batley family, perhaps? Fat Lord, pair twins. My apologies, he can be so bad here sometimes. Shamal Bat. A fan. Six rings with various stones. Four pounds. An ornamented guitar. Man, everyone has a knife. Nicholas Maker, attorney. I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. I am appalled! Oh, he also has a ruby ring. Two shillings, three pence. Reading of the last will and testament of Sebastian Cloudsley. I already got a little family tree here. Here's Albert. Here's Sebastian. All right, so we know Edmund's outside. Is the, this Rose we're talking to right now? The inheritors are present. Edmund, Rose, Willard, and Peter. Beatrix is not here. And Sebastian's dead, of course. Amor Aforums by Sebastian Cloudsley. How to be happy. Eat a hearty meal every day and do not waste your time on trivia. Yeah, oh, I'm going to disagree with that. With Sebastian. Waste a lot of your time on trivialities. It's the only way to be. How to avoid being upset. Strive for that which holds meaning. And do not shrink from responsibility. 
How to be inspired. Take a walk in your forest and breathe the fresh air. How to avoid being scared. Feeling scared is a weakness. Be strong instead. Wow, these are wise words, Sebastian. Just look, don't be scared. Just don't. Don't be that. Be opposite that instead. Dear Willard Wright, okay, so this dot bequeath you the gold. This has been torn up. I want to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. I bequeath notes from each uh, no, it's astronomy, grant you to leave to finish and publish it. My late sister, your mother, financial troubles, bequeath to you, provide compilation of my aforums. We met so rarely after you left, I, therefore I bequeath you the Blackfield Man Manor ha Museum for colonies, my savings land, and ha come home and a step life and accomplishments. I, Sebastian Cloudsley of Blackfield County, being in bodily health and of sound and disposing mind and memory, nominate and appoint Nicholas Maker as executor of my last will and testament. Dear Brother Edmund... Alright, August Jockey Club, Doiby. Dear Peter Batley, we have sent you frequent reminders consoining the settlement of your debt, and yet, to date, the debt remains unpaid. We humbly request that you make your payments as soon as possible, or we will be forced to take the matter into our own hands. The debt currently stands at 255 pounds, blackguard, and buck loans. All right, Peter Batley's not doing too well. And, um, let's see. Yeah, Peter Batley is here, son of Beatrix, so nephew of Sebastian. So he's, he's saying, my apologies, he can be so. One of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. So who tore up? Who tore this up? Well, I mean, I guess it's Peter, because Peter owes money. He's not doing well. He's got debt. So maybe this will did not, uh, was not very favorable to old Peter. Alright, well, let's go to thinking panel. Let's see what it's asking for. Blank was to, blank was blank to receive blank and blank. Blank's will and ordered blank blank and blank blank to take the blank from blank blank. Suddenly blank blank died from blank blank. Well, I mean, I, we can probably guess at that last one. Someone's dying from spontaneous combustion. Okay, we are assembling these. We met so rarely after you left for colonies. Therefore, I bequeath you my my savings, land, and the Blackfield Manor House. Come home and establish a museum of my life and accomplishments. Addressed to... I want to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Therefore, I bequeath to you the notes from research I have undertaken on astronomy. I grant you to finish and publish it under both our names. My late sister. Your mother disclosed your financial troubles to me long ago, and I resolved to help you. I bequeath to you the compilation of my forums to provide you direction in your life, which you clearly... Uh, it's quite harsh. It is quite harsh. So, I mean, I guess that's going to be Rose. Um, let's see. Let me... What was the... Um, what was the last name? Rose Kubert. Well, let's see. Unless this is Rose here. Well, unless... Oh, no, no. I Is it saying that maybe this is... Maybe Beatrix... It's addressed to Beatrix, but she's not here. Peter is here in her stead. And he's the one who was owed money, so he's mad. 
about being shafted. Did I get her name in the thing? Okay, no, her name is not even underlined. So she's not actually part of this thing we're doing right now. And someone's getting the golden idol of Xenopolis. You will know what to do with it. We don't actually know who that one... Well, we know that we can see who has it. And what he's doing with it. So, of the four people... Edmund is the oldest. Willard Wright is associate? And of course, Peter, Peter Batley is here. Oh wait, no, it says your late sister, your mother. Okay, so that's it is talking to it is talking to uh to Mr. Batley. So he tore this up and then left. So, he would be mad. Here's a sword down here. Maybe, possibly, he could have picked, like, taken the sword and threatened someone because he was mad about it. But then again, he's holding a scorched horse brush. If he's holding a horse brush, that would kind of make it sound like he's one of, uh, he's one of these, one of the pairs. Why is he holding a horse brush otherwise? This guy is holding a ticket for horse race. And there's also one down here. And of course, someone who, you know, is in money trouble may just start, you know, betting money that he doesn't have. So this could cert this could certainly be him. Might be him. Well, of the, the people present, I mean, this is going to have to be Rose. And we know who this gentleman is. Right, Nicholas Maker. What? Not that. Right, this is the the person who would be getting the. Let's see. Where? Where's that thing? Right, prepare the carriage for tomorrow. All right, we know this is Edmund over here. So let's see, if I'm suggesting that these two are the pairs... This person is Edmund's carriage man? Carriageman? Would this be the fourth person? Fourth person. Willard Wright? Possibly? Have we seen his name in any of these other things? Because why is he holding the idol? So 
So someone's getting bequeathed the golden idol, saying you'll know what to do with it. Well, so far, the only owners of the idol that were being seen have the name Cloudsley. So from that, I might say, hey, maybe Edmund is getting bequeathed the golden idol. So there's something here about Sharp Mind bequeathing you the notes. See, someone left for the colonies. And bequeath gets getting bequeathed the Savings Land and Blackfield Manor House. And someone's getting bequeathed the notes on research. Right, the book here. Which is thrown down on the floor, whoever, you know, whoever got this book, whoever got this book didn't like it. She seems calm. And she definitely has been traveling. She's been... away. So, may- oh. I'm gonna leave her name there. Maybe with saying that Rose is the one who went to the colonies. I mean, in that case, there's only one other person listed here. No. It is not correct. So, um, it, sounds, it looks like Rose is probably the one who went to the colonies. This one is specifically saying the relation. My late sister, your mother. So, it would have to be Peter. And then the book is thrown on the floor next to this torn up note. Uh, so, it seems like that would be Peter. Um... Why don't we switch these places? Since it's, I'm guessing Willard is holding the idol. Okay, that is correct. So the remaining people here. Well, the pairs are James and Adam. Um, David Garan, is he this guy here? There are two pairs. But which one is Adam and which one is James? Okay, those are Adam and James. So, now we have those two filled in. Blank, blank, was blank to receive blank and blank in... Blank's will and... Well, we know whose will it is. And ordered blank, blank, and blank, blank to take the blank from blank, blank. Suddenly, blank, blank died. Well, it's James Pear that's dying. <clears throat> so, the one who would be angry... ...was Peter... Was Peter Batley was upset to receive a forum in oh Sebastian Cloudsley's will and ordered Adam Pear and James Pear to take the idol <clears throat> from Willard Wright. Peter Batley, encumbered by his gambling debts, had placed high hopes on his uncle's testament. Upon discovering he had inherited nothing but a, books of a book of aphorisms, he tore up the will and ordered his servants to take the golden statue from the stranger Willard. Suddenly one of the servants burst into flames, all right? So he's like, no, that man is not, he's not even a family member. He's not even a Cloudsley. And, uh, because who is Willard? We don't know. He doesn't deserve the inheritance. Uh, so they try to take it, but it turns out... Uh, turns out Willard knows some magic and knows how to do the, the spell. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, is this uh, this this one again? Yeah. Chapter four: The Cursed Inheritance, the Murder at Little Mermaid. Well, doesn't seem like things are going well here. Is this Willard's place? Why did that bugger give me a note when he damn he knows damn well I can't read? Rusty old half a shears, a piece of stale bread. You can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman's place down at the docks. Will he know to lay low? Who can say? Trapdoor in the ceiling. An empty bed. Not warm. A picture. There's like some blue flowers. Door does not open. Oh, well, well, let's... There's people down there. Let's look up here first. A trap door in the ceiling. Uh, more flowers. Revenge, says RR. There's this guy. The man's not breathing. A walking cane. Ruby rings keep showing up. Alarm, alarm, a break-in. Watchman's lantern. Watchman's alarm rattle. He's got his watchman's spear. There's some glass. So he's sounding the alarm. A washing bowl filled with slightly bloody water. Dear proud beast master... That's what the ladies call me. I have attended our departed brother's send-off and accepted the keepsake that he bestowed upon our brotherhood in his will. I shall send this letter tomorrow, September the 10th. I hope it will reach you without, the de de without delay. Already, it is midnight. I will retire to my bed, for this has been a long day. May Griffin awaken! Proud Beast Initiate. What's happening down here? It's a good old time happening down here. At the Little Mermaid Inn, Amazing Evans musical performance on September 9th. Event shall commence circa 11 p.m. So we're seeing it now. Wanted. Robert Redruth, escaped convict. Reward, 50 pounds. Note, he can't read. Tell me, what does that man have that I lack? A hand of cards, seven pence, a key, a small sword. Be calm, John. He was a perfect gentleman. He bought me a drink and then retired upstairs. Hand of cards. To Annie, you are beautiful like a rose. For you, I will take any blows. Oh, Jesus. Annie, you are like a glass of wine. Your hair is very fine. I will find gold in a mine if that makes you forever mine. Uh, your piglet is full of love. Oh no. Maybe he should have rethought this. <laughs> Two shillings and four pence. A key. A stiletto blade. What we got here? Mm-hmm. Just deal the next one. It's all luck anyway. Oh, that's the, uh, the coachman, isn't it? Remember you as an agent of our trading company have to reflect its values to the fullest. Number one, never be late. The client leaves the port on the 10th. Two, be persuasive. Do not take no for an answer. We must get the client's product. Three, be effective. Once you have the product, deliver, to me, uh, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. Most importantly, no matter what you do, be mindful of our reputation. Our names must remain spotless. All right. They need to get the product. And they will not take no for an answer. Hand of cards. 
two sh uh, sh uh, money, a key, and a dagger. Oh, mother, forgive me. I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. A violin, a key, a Navaha, Navaha folding blade. What did he gamble? Tab, green, Briege, and Blair. Something scratched out up here. Dandelion room, Willard Wright, one night. Forget me not room, Ash Blair, one night. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Dear Oscar Boyton, it has come to our attention that the good owner of the Little Mermaid offers services to those who want to travel products that are less agreeable to the authorities. I will come by in three days. If you still have some spare space in your gin barrels and you are willing to earn extra money, reach out to me. Hmm. Less agreeable to the authorities. He's got a knife. He's got a partially peeled lemon. And keys. The street door to the street is shut with a latch. Alright, well, let's go to thinking. Blank Blank crept into Blank Blank's room through the blank. While Blank Blank and Blank Blank were Blank Blank were playing cards with loud music, a fight ensued upstairs and Blank Blank got stabbed with a blank. Alright, well... Let's see. You can probably assume that guy is Robert Redruth. Crept into Blank Blank's room through the blank. So we're going to say the, the window. Oh, and he does, he does initial at RR. No, I don't think I looked at this. To my dear Maurice. The watch is ticking. An empty box? Oh, music box. Proud Beastmaster. We saw this. The door does not open. There he is, out the window. So he smashed his way through the window, came in and just killed Maurice over here. So there's M-E. Looking at these other names. You may, this is the amazing Evans over here. I don't suppose he plays. Oh no, he does say he he gambled something. So he he is one of the players here. Oops. So who was the piglet full of love? Is this, the, is this the piglet? Or... When he says that man... Which man are we talking about? Are we talking about the man who was just killed? Or one of the two men here? Talking about this guy? Trap doors. Doesn't we don't get any more information from those? This 
This guy's sounding the alarm. Watchman number two, Henry Parker. I don't know why his name would be relevant. Is there anything else about this? Seems like it's just that it's a music box. Alright, so I guess if he's Evans, maybe he gambled the watch. We know he's Evans. And the only E on here is M-E. So the f thing upstairs says the owner is Maurice. So maybe he's Maurice Evans. Well, I mean, we can guess this is Annie. So, I mean, whoops, not that. Take a look at this again. So, is this Willard here? We have Annie, Annie G, Willard Wright. We have JB and OB. seen a last name beginning with G as of yet. Doesn't seem like we have. I didn't get John yet. Okay, so this is John. So John B. Could be Blair or Boyton. No, I think it would said Blair belongs to Ash. Ash Blair. Right. For now, forget we not room Ash Blair. We have Willard Wright and Ash Blair signing in here. Oh, this is Oscar Boyton, yeah. And we could fill in the the watchman's name. I don't know how it would be relevant here, but that is Henry Parker. Just ticking. You know, his, uh, his scissor is not bloody. blood here it's written on here but no other blood there's no blood outside either door does not open or at least not 
You'd think it would open from the inside, but not from this way. That one doesn't open. But if someone was in this room, they could open it and go down here. Possibly. And his, this note does say that you cannot take no for an answer. You must get the product. But his knife isn't bloody either. I mean, it would be, it'd be a bit obvious if we looked in their pockets and we saw that Unless, and we saw that there was blood on the person's knife. So there's trapdoor in the ceiling. Doesn't seem like we can uh, examine the attic. I mean, if someone was here, like, there's a stool here, you know, someone could potentially stand on this and go up here, crawl across and down here. Like, someone could do that. But we can't actually look up there, it seems. What does that man have that he lacks? Okay, I oh know she's she is talking about the guy who died. Water or drink, retired upstairs. So I went upstairs. note says lie low for a couple I mean the note does say lie low for a couple of days why would he need to lie low well I mean he's wanted anyway regardless of whether he commits a murder well he, he and this isn't bloody but it is only half a pair of shears it's only half so the other half could be somewhere we can't like examine the body any more than that. Right, the watch is ticking. The only thing we know about this is that it's a music box. And it's empty currently. And we found it open. So someone took whatever was inside, and we can probably guess what was inside that. And of course, if someone did break in from the outside, why would there be glass outside? There's also footsteps in the snow from the watchman, but don't see any footsteps around that. Slightly bloody water. If I'm looking for a last name that ends with B and is not Blair, maybe it's Briege. And 
Annie's name has a last name begins with green, with G, so perhaps green. So we know Willard Wright was playing the game. We know Annie Green was playing the game. We know Mari Sevens was playing the game. John, maybe maybe Breeze was playing the game. And then AB came in. AB was the last person to come in. So, is this Ash Blair? Is this Willard Wright? Yeah. All right, so let's say Robert Redruth crept, in, crept into Willard Wright's room through the window while John Breeze and Annie Green and Ash Blair were playing cards. A fight ensued upstairs, and Willard Wright got stabbed with a shear? No, not a shear. With a knife? No, not a knife. With a small sword? It was not a small sword. A navaja? No. What about a dagger? No. Or a stiletto? No. Well, it said, well, it could be one of those was right. It's just that could be something else here is wrong. There's also the Watchman's Spear. I mean, that wasn't bloody. So we're assuming that Robert crept in through the window. Or maybe it could be through the trap door. And we're guessing it's a window. The window is broken. Assuming that this is not some sort of frame up. As he's standing there. But maybe. Maybe it's for the sake of this man to catch him. So maybe he's just a sucker who would kill him. Well, we know that Ash Blair has to get the product and he cannot take no for an answer. He could have gotten in through the trap door. And if he did, well, the weapon he's holding is a dagger. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. Well, I could fill in this over here anyway. While we're at it. Uh, Maurice Evans only played one hand, huh? Busted just on one. I mean, the bartender himself did not do any better. Okay, so that's filled in correctly. All right, and Ash did just join the game on this current hand, so he, he just arrived. So it seems likely that Ash Blair kept in, crept in... Oh, wait, no, no. If he was creeping in, then, like, he was not playing cards, obviously. The previous hand, Oscar would have been playing. There we go. Okay, that's it. A man going by the name of Ash Blair kept into Willard's room through the trap door to steal something important. But when he opened the music box, it woke Willard up, and a fight ensued in the fracas. Ash stabbed Willard and attempted to frame an escaped convict. 
can't believe we ever we ever doubted Robert. Oh, what's that? Good morning, innkeeper. I heard a man was murdered here a week ago. I had arranged convict in him in. Now bugger off! Tell me more about the evening when Willard Wright died. I will make it worth your while. Alright, it looks like that the convict was indeed framed. The frame-up was successful. But, um... Something else has been successful is that we've successfully have gone for an hour trying out Case of the Golden Idol. And it certainly seems very interesting. It's, uh, it's fun. You have these little... Little kind of diorama scenes of figuring out oh, what happened here. Um, and maybe it's not all that meets the eye. Like in the previous ones, it was a, it was a bit more simple. But in this one, it, they incorporated, hey, maybe that guy who looks like he's the murderer, maybe he is actually not the murderer. So just filling in the information as it appears is not going to work this time. So it does appear that the cases will get more complex uh, as you go. And uh, I don't actually know how many chapters there are. Yeah, we can't see from here. We can't see how many there are. But uh, we did the first four. And uh, I can see why people were making comparisons to Oberdin, in that with Oberdin you do have to examine a scene and identify names of people and what they were doing. Um, game plays very differently from Oberdin, of course. As I mentioned, it does kind of... A little bit kind of remind me a bit of the laser lords in the uh in the idea of you're filling up a word bank from the inf from the information you're getting so you can use those words in another way um but of course that's not a reference anyone's going to make because no one knows about laser lords um but yeah, I, I had a good time with this. I was enjoying it quite a bit. And I can see why it's gotten so much uh, positive. I wouldn't say press, because I haven't actually seen much press. But I mean, the review, the user reviews on Steam have been, uh, are very high. And uh, it's a game I'm glad I tried, because I don't think I would have tried this. Because honestly, it it's kind kind of ugly i mean i don't want to you know criticize the the art it's just you know looking at it doesn't play very well in screenshots let's say let's say you look at screenshots of the game it might not you know stand out it's it's not the strength it's you know it's it's it does have its own its own style it has it has a style to it um, and, and maybe that doesn't come across so well just in, you know, screenshots. You have to play the game, you know, you have to play it. And that we have played it for an hour. Uh, so that has been our tryout of, of Case of the Golden Idol. And, uh, I don't have any drawings because I didn't, I couldn't think of anything to draw. So there's, you can, you can bask in the art style of Case of the Golden Idol. That has been uh, our hour-long tryout, as we, uh, you know, may, you know, might have been not, might 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 have not been a good idea to take that idol off of that island. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. Taking that golden idol off the island seems like it's it's no good for this family. Maybe 